I have helped so many of you over the last 15, 20 years. I've helped you with high blood pressure, with diabetes, with cancer, autoimmune diseases, sickle cell diseases. I have helped tens of thousands of you worldwide. And you don't even know who I am. You don't even know my name, but I'm going to tell you my name. I am Aston Farkison. I am the founder of New Species Corporation. I am the CEO and president of New Species Corporation. And I want to thank you all for allowing me and my team at New Species to help you. And I hope over the next weeks and months and years to come, we will be able to help many more of you. But in the meantime, I want to talk to you about human history. Human history based on signs, based on DNA signs, based on paleoanthropology and all the discoveries that have been made and human history, human evolution. So I'd like to share some of the knowledge I have about human history. The what, when, where of human history and in the end, how I believe human history play a role in our health, in our diets, and how its knowledge can help us to live longer and better. I will begin with one piece of land located between the Mediterranean Sea and Tanzania. And one lake that we all should consider a lake that is like the mother of God, the mother of mankind. And this lake is called Lake Nalubale. It was renamed Lake Victoria by the British about a hundred years ago. So let's talk about this one strip of land. It is not separated by oceans. It is not separated by seas. It's not separated by water. Stretching from Egypt to Tanzania. So this one piece of land has an area called Aldivai Gorge in Tanzania, right by the Rift Valley not far from Kenya. Olivai Gorge is where scientists and paleoanthropologists believe the first humans and Earth appear. 1.9 million years ago, the Homo habilis appeared there. Thereafter came Homo Erectus about 1.2 million years ago, but even before Habilis and Erectus, Lucy existed about 3.2 million years ago. So why is this piece of land so important? From Tanzania to Kenya to Ethiopia to Somalia to Eritrea to Sudan, to Nubia, to ancient Egypt. All these countries had tribe, tribal kingdoms existing there for probably 10,000 years. And these people very likely emerge from Homo erectus. Homo sapiens, 
emerged around 1 million years to 500,000 years ago. So these tribal kingdoms and this one piece of land may be the people who created the first kingdoms on earth, the first villages on earth, the first civilizations on earth, the first empires on earth. And that's why we're going to talk about them. Lake Nalubale, or Lake Victoria, is located right by Tanzania and is abutted by several other countries. But what's important about Lake Nalubale is that Olduvai Gorge is right around the corner from Lake Nalubale. What does it mean? Water. Lake Nalubale feeds today, as in ancient times, many rivers flowing south into Africa. But even more importantly, Lake Nalubale feeds the Nile River, the entire Nile Valley, the White Nile, the Blue Nile. It feeds all the countries I have just mentioned and it runs from Tanzania into the Mediterranean Ocean. That is how important the Nile River is to the Nile dwellers who have lived there for over 10,000 years. In some cases, there are artifacts showing that they may have lived along the Nile for at least 30,000 years. From all indications, Homo habilis and Homo erectus, as well as the early Homo sapiens, seem to have fed about 80 to 90 percent on sedges and other fruits and vegetables. That's what they ate. All the way up through to modern, modern times. In the Nile Valley, where farming began on the Sahara, farming began there probably about 10,000 years ago. And these Nile dwellers and Saharans were eating millet, sorghum, chickpeas, and other tubers that they could grow. And again, they ate some fish and some meat, but it doesn't seem that they were eating more than perhaps 10% meat. Again, it was between 80 and 90% fruit and vegetables, and then we could add now tubers, like yams and potatoes. So you could say that these tribal kingdoms didn't do so bad in building their civilizations because these people were able to build edifices like stella, pyramids, temples. They were able to build extraordinary irrigation systems and dams. They dug many wells, deep wells, for water during the drying up of the, the landscape. And all the other extraordinary culture in artifacts, arts, architecture, science, astronomy, engineering, that these people engage in at an extremely high level before 3000 BC, possibly before even 4000 BC, 4000 years before Christ. That is how extraordinary these people were. And the Nazlet, the Atarians, 
are the next group of people and cultures like those who created the first commercial and industrialized systems that are known to man, that engage in trade practices and they build administrative system and other institutions. You could say all the tribal kingdoms from these countries, they form the early beginning of human culture and they forge some of the greatest knowledge and inventions in human history. So we're going to talk about these people because these tribal kingdoms are the group of people who formed what are now known today as the Kushites and the Egyptians that's written about so extraordinarily in the Bible and other historical texts that's been written about by some of the most respected scholars and ancient historians who ever lived. So we're going to talk about all that and I'm going to share all this information with you. And hopefully, at the end of this discussion, you'll be able to understand better about human history and human evolution and how you may need to live today to be able to live better and longer.